to our um, uh, winners. Uh, Lisa Pratt is um, a winner of the um, Best Paper Award in the Masters of Student category. Just a few words about her. Um, she holds a bachelor's degree in editorial photography from the University of Brighton in UK, a master's degree in film archiving from the University of East Anglia, and she just graduated from the Master's in Information Sciences program at the University of Tennessee uh, last year, so congratulations on that. Um, Lisa has worked for the Imperial War Museum Film and Video Archive in London, and the Screen Archive Southeast in Brighton, uh, UK, before moving to Nashville. Um, in Tennessee, she co-founded um, the Archive of Moving Image and Sound, which is the regional audiovisual archive. And since 2010, uh, she has been the project coordinator for the Tennessee uh, Newspaper Digitization Project at the University of Tennessee. And I guess just following her graduation from the uh, master's program, um, she is assuming um, a new role as digital projects librarian at the University of Tennessee in July uh, 2016. So welcome, Louise, and go ahead. Great, thank you very much, and um, I'm very glad to be here this afternoon. Um, but in true British style, I'd like to start with an apology. Uh, I just wanted to apologize that I can't be here for the um, the other talks because um, I'm actually on vacation this week following my graduation, and I have a house, a house full of guests from overseas. So um, I didn't want my absence to be interpreted as a lack of interest in other people's talks. Um, but I, I, I do have visitors here, so I hope that I can catch up uh, maybe if the other talks have been recorded or the slides share, shared later, um, because I, I am very happy to be here. So um, the uh, non-textual information in digitized historical newspapers, um, the problem of retrieving non-textual items from newspapers caught my attention when I was writing the narrative for the Tennessee Newspaper Digitization Project's um, National Endowment for the Humanities grant um, a couple of years ago. And in that narrative, we talked about the Memphis Appeal and how it had won a Pulitzer Prize for in 1923 for its editorials, and in particular, its editorial cartoons that had taken a stand against the Klan. And this got me thinking about how researchers would go about searching for those specific items, um, i.e. the cartoons, in digitized newspapers, and um, got me thinking about the problems involved with identifying and indexing um, and retrieving non-textual items in historical newspapers. Let me find the arrow here. Okay. So, um, first of all, what are the different types of non-textual items in digitized newspapers? Uh, there are several different types that can be found in newspapers. Uh, these are some of them here uh, on this slide. There are um, maps illustrations, illustrated advertisements, uh, graphs, photographs, editorial cartoons, and comics. So taking a step back prior to digitized newspapers, when newspapers were accessed on microfilm, researchers could use printed indexes, uh, which were published by the microfilm companies, to locate articles on specific subjects or on specific people. And in the first example here, I know the slides are, uh, the text is a little small, but the top image and um, the one just to the left there, um, the articles that are, that are listed there, um, articles that were accompanied by photographs or illustrations were denoted with an asterisk. And you can just about see the asterisk on the, the far right of the, um, of the, the image there. Um, in the second example, just to the bottom right there, the specific type of non-textual item was identified and noted in the abstract. Um, and here we can see 
editorial cartoons, an illustration, and a photograph. I've, I've circled those there in red. Um, if anyone's familiar with these directories, then you'll know just how huge and cumbersome they were. Um, some libraries still still hold on to them, and they're um, they're an inter interesting artifact in themselves if ever you use them. So while this method um, worked fairly well for retrieving, <coughs> excuse me, for retrieving non-textual items according to the subject or the person, it didn't allow the researcher to limit the search to only non-textual items. So if the researcher was specifically looking for, for example, editorial cartoons, they didn't have that, that um, ability just to, to search for non-textual items. Um, so, how are non-textual items indexed and retrieved in digitized newspapers online? I'm going to show examples from three different projects and briefly outline the different approaches. There, actually, there are some other projects which I've explored since writing this paper, um, and so I wasn't able to include them here. But one that I particularly wanted to um, draw your attention to, if, if this subject is of interest to you, um, I'm going to put the URL in chat there. Um, the one that, that I, I particularly enjoyed looking at recently um, is from the National Library of Wales, which is my home country. Um, it's, that library is also known as the Llavagas Genedlaid al Cymru in its native language. And um, the search function, their, their search function includes features that allow you to um, limit your search to various types of non-textual items. And they're similar to the um, functions in, the, in Australia's Trove website, which I'll come to in a moment. But I just wanted to mention that one from Wales, because I've looked at it recently and, and really enjoyed it. Um, so the first project that we'll look at here on this slide is the National Digital Newspaper Program and its Chronicling America website. And out of all the examples um, that I'm looking at in this presentation, this is the most limiting, um, or lim the most limited, excuse me, for retrieving non-textual items. And in fact, there is no option at all to search for non-textual items. And this is primarily because the program's guidelines allow only for the minimal human intervention at the scanning stage. Um, and the, the vast scope of the project is um, that the scope is, is the, excuse me, the scope of the project is so vast and there's limited federal funding, which means the project guidelines provide for only the most basic column zoning and minimal image manipulation. Um, this page here to the bottom right on this slide shows the column zoning. And as you can see, it's limited to the text. Um, so there are no um, bounding boxes around the illustrations there or the, the comic. Um, this is actually a PDF where the text has been selected. It's not actually from the scanning software, but it, it does illustrate that um, only the columns, the text in the columns are selected. Um, you can hopefully, you might be able to see there though, that um, some of the text in the comic strip itself has been picked up by the OCR process. I'm going to presume everyone here is familiar with the OCR process, the optical character recognition process, um, which is where the scanned image of text is converted into searchable text. Um, so if you were searching for a keyword that just happened to be in that cartoon, then you would be lucky enough to retrieve that um, illustration in your search, um, in search process. So because only the minimal, minimal zoning is used here, the non-textual items aren't identified at this stage. And um, so they cannot be included in search results. And so they are effectively invisible to researchers. 
The next database I wanted to look at is the ProQuest Historical Newspapers database. And this has an advanced search function, and which gives the ability to limit searches to document type. Uh, don't know if it's evident on that slide, so the text is a little small. Um, some of the some of which are non-text items, such as advertisements or illustrated advertisements, editorial cartoon slash comic, illustration and image slash photograph. While this is a useful way to narrow a search to a specific type of non-textual item, there are still a couple of drawbacks with this function. Um, first, this particular database doesn't seem to distinguish between editorial cartoons and comics, and these are usually two very different categories, um, as you can see from this slide. Uh, the, the top one is a comic or a funny, and the bottom one's an editorial cartoon. So obviously comics are usually just for fun, um, usually, usually humorous, um, although some are um, just uh, have sort of straight fictional um, dramatic content, while editorial cartoons are usually used to convey a topical or a political message. Um, so lumping those two under one category is not particularly useful for researchers. Uh, secondly, while it's useful to be able to filter results by item type, no keywords have been assigned to these non-textual items. So unless the OCR process has picked up words within the item, the researcher is unable to retrieve anything by using keywords um, here. So if you're searching for editorial cartoons of or about, say, Hitler, as in this um, cartoon, uh, editorial cartoon at the bottom, using that as a keyword would return results only if the word itself appears in the caption or in the text. So the example at the bottom of this slide here would not be returned if the user had searched for edit editorial cartoons using the keyword Hitler because nowhere in the text does it say that word. Um, this cartoon also illustrates another well-recognized problem with indexing and retrieving non-textual items, and that is the issue of an image's ofness and aboutness. Um, while the cartoon uses an image of a bear, it is actually about Russia. So um, that's another um, another common problem when indexing and, uh, and, and describing images is whether you describe what you're looking at or what the image is about. So this is actually where um, crowdsource tagging might come in useful, and I'm going to talk a little more about that in just a moment. So next we'll take a look at the Australian Digital Newspaper Program, and this is part of the National Library of Australia's Prove database. And on the subject of crowdsourcing, this project has really made great use of crowdsourcing when it comes to improving text searches. Users can register on the website to gain access to the OCR text, which they can then correct line by line. Um, so as you can see from the stats on this slide, those are the, those figures there are the total lines of text corrected since 2008, uh, I think it's since 2008 when um, they introduced this feature. And as you can see, it's very popular and clearly highly addictive. Um, so I'm going to come back to this idea of crowdsourcing in just a moment. I just wanted to share those um, statistics with you for the, the user text corrections, because I think the, it, it really illustrates how um, users really get into um, to, to, to engage in with the material that they're searching and how they want to improve the search functions. So uh, back to non-textual material, um, the Australian project scanning software utilizes article zoning rather than just the column zoning that we saw in the earlier slide. Um, non-textual items are identified by the scanning software 
and then headlines and captions are keyed manually. The type of non non-textual item, so whether it's an illustration, a photograph and so on, is also keyed at this point. And you can see from this illustration here um, that the, excuse me, this image here, that the illustration has been highlighted in green. So this is a screenshot of how an illustrated advertisement is identified in the page viewer within Trove. You can see that it says illustrated down there at the bottom. So the Australian project allows the user to limit a search to non-textual items. And excuse me a moment, I'm just going to put my mic on mute. Just one second. I apologize, I'm at home and my dog, I had to let my dog out of the room. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, so the Australian project allows the user to limit a search to the non-textual items. And these are, I find this is somewhat misleadingly referred to as illustrated articles on this advanced search page. It's right down there highlighted at the bottom of the page. Um, so to find the illustrated advertisement um, that we just looked at on the previous slide, I used the advanced search function and typed in some keywords. Uh, see, I typed in chocolate and old gold. Um, and I limited the search to a specific title, Australian Women's Weekly, and to illustrated articles highlighted down there at the bottom. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's also an option for limiting um, the article category on this page. And when the results are returned, the user can refine can refine the search even further by illustration type. So this is possible thanks to the manual keying at the scanning stage. So somebody would have identified these um, non-textual items as, for example, a photograph, a map, an illustrated advert. Um, these additional stages in the scanning process do cost more money and unsurprisingly this is the kind of work that is all outsourced, uh, outsourced offshore. Um, here I limited the search to illustration and advertising and the results returned were all illustrated adverts for old gold chocolates as we saw in the previous slide. So I found that Trove, the Australian um, newspaper project um, and Trove itself has the most sophisticated search capability for retrieving non-textual items. However, it still does not incorporate subject keyword in. Um, all the results were retrieved because the keywords were either, um, were, excuse me, all, any results that did, let me start that sentence again. Any results that were retrieved with those keywords was only, were only because the, those keywords were within the text, it, within that non-textual item. They were present in text within the non-textual item. Uh, very briefly, I just, uh, I mentioned crowdsource, crowdsource tagging earlier. And the Trove database allows users to tag and comment on items and offers an option for searching these tags. Uh, this is potentially a very useful way to keyword non-textual items. And as we saw from the te text correction statistics, it could be a very popular and compelling way for users to engage with and contribute to the material that they want to search. Um, however, a downside to this um, is the, the lack of controlled vocabulary could be a problem. Um, going back to the example of searching for editorial cartoons about Hitler, I tried to I tried searching the user generated tags in, in Trove. And I should note that um, this this search this searches across all the tags within Tro the Trove collection and cannot yet be limited to a specific type of material. So you couldn't just search user generated tags for newspapers, say. Um, 
So the results are returned as a tag cloud, as you can see here. And when I clicked on the largest tag in this cloud, I was taken to a page of results, which coincidentally were all from newspapers. Um, and I was able to search those results, um, uh, excuse me, I was able to limit those results to illustrated articles. And some of the items that I looked at did have an illustration of Hitler, and they contained no text in the illustration. Um, so this shows that this kind of tagging can lead to items that wouldn't usually be retrieved when searching just the scanned text. So it was a user-generated tag that did lead me to that item. Um, interestingly, though, when I looked at the results, there were no editorial cartoons that had been tagged um, with this keyword yet. So um, I, th I still think that this, this um, method has a lot of potential. Um, as this paper raised more questions than answers, I wanted to just end with some closing, closing thoughts rather than a conclusion. Um, the retrieval of non-textual items from digitized newspapers is still limited in many online sources. There are still a lot of still a lot of limitations with identifying and retrieving non-textual items from dig digitized newspapers. While some databases offer some, some functions, others offer none at all. Indexing is currently limited to item type and not subject, um, either ofness or aboutness. And while accompanying text in an article or caption may help identify what the content might be, it does not always describe the actual item. Even if the accompanying text is appropriate to the image, if it is part of the image and not readable to the OCR process, or if the text and con content is abstract or metaphorical, as in many editorial cartoons, search results may be poor or just not relevant. So is it worth investing time and money in? Um, while the process of article bounding is technologically fairly straightforward, human input is still required to do the most basic categorization. And this is obviously a time consuming and costly process. And that's even before subject analysis is even contemplated. So is crowdsourcing the answer? Well, the Australian project has demonstrated that the high standards has demonstrated the high standards that can be reached with crowdsourcing, but um, how or can it be applied to describing non-textual items? Tagging has the potential, but also uh, tagging has potential, but also has the potential to get out of hand quickly um, with people using natural language rather than controlled vocabularies. So these are all questions facing newspaper digitization projects at the moment, and questions that need to be addressed if we are going to make photographs, cartoons, illustrations, um, and illustrations an integral part of the search and retrieval process. So I don't know, actually, I, on my screen, there's a little, uh, I think the bottom of that slide is missing. It had a number 30 on it. I don't know if anybody else can see that, but I always end my um, my slideshows with the number 30 because that was um, the telegraphic code for um, the end, no more. <laughs> um, actually, Western Union code, which ties in with our um, newspaper and uh, journalism theme. So um, I have a couple of slides to show my sources and picture credits in case anyone's interested. Um, thank you for listening. Oh, thank you, Catherine, for putting that in the um, chat there. <laughs>